Come on, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais, ladies and gentlemen. Ricky's is weird, it's genuine, it's exciting and a pleasure to have you back. You've Thank been you. on the show so many times, it's like you're my sidekick or something here. Yeah. <laughs> now, a new... Just show clips. <laughs> <laughs> a new series of extras starts yeah. this week. Uh, congratulations on, well, on getting a second series, essentially, but also... Congratulations on already fucking it up. It's next week, you moron. <laughs> But away from the cameras, we're the closest of friends. <laughs> uh, so when does it start? It starts on the 14th, is that right? Yes, yeah, right, a week yesterday. Okay. It's a week yesterday. Uh, is it, do you think it's better than the last series? Is it... Uh, the, oh, well, the, I, I think mean, it's how do you funnier. I, th I think it's the funniest thing we've done. I mean, I, I, I don't know what better means. I don't think it'll have the, the emotional resonance of the office. And, yeah. and, it, and we, we didn't want it to have. We, we, uh, it's, a, it's a more traditional sitcom. It looks a bit postmodern with the, the sort of meta level of you know, a play within a play, but it's, um, yeah, we think it's funnier. You're a film reviewer, you should was, know these words. That was like a proper answer to a proper question there. I know, uh, so you'll cut it out. No. <laughs> <laughs> I do look a bit more like Parker these days, I don't know, that's the problem, you're you getting me confused. <laughs> <laughs> He's kept <laughs> himself in trim, look at you. <laughs> Undo the button, go on, let it hang out. Look at this, look There's at this. There's nothing no, there. There's no, nothing right. there. Fucking no. let it go. What? Look at that. What? What? It's a cyst, is all that is. I'm having a chop off <laughs> Thanks for showing people that. And now I'm ill. Uh, you can talk. Lardy. <laughs> all right. I very much admired you and your um, co-creator, Stephen Merchant, because after The Office, and let's face it, The Office was quite rightly hailed as a tremendous piece of work. One of all's Willow was a huge hit. Um, I would have thought that, you know, to get back into a second series, to start working on something else must have been very daunting. And yet you didn't seem to find it so. Well, why not? But I didn't. I never really cared how it was received, in it, really, because we didn't care about the office. We did it. We sort of did it for ourselves. And um, even the second series, the office, we, you know, put out of our minds what people might be expecting, and um, we sort of pretended it was the first time again, really. But does uh, it get harder to do the more success you have, the more because it's obviously you're you're aware of the expectation. But you, you re we do it really honestly. We do it for the work, and so we're excited about putting these things on the telly. We know they're going to be seen. We don't do them and put them in a drawer. And we want as many people to watch them as possible, but without compromise. Yeah. So if someone said, oh, you'd get another million listeners by doing this, we, we, we just wouldn't do it. We're excited about coming up with the idea. There's nothing, there's nothing more exciting than the idea, genuinely. And then, you know, it, it can be ruined or rendered correctly. Mm -hmm. All right, um, who's in the new series? Because uh, one of the exciting things about the first series extra was obviously it was a funny show. You were great in it. It was, you know, good performances all around, I thought. But the guest stars were obviously a big selling point and people loved seeing that. Who, uh, and, and you set the bar pretty high. I mean, you had Samuel yeah, but it was, it was never. It was really never about the names. They were the ice on the cake because we was we were sort of, we plague ourselves with um, realism. So, you know, if you were on a film set, we really wanted them to be the real stars playing themselves, and that added something. It's also a shorthand because we don't just get people who are famous, you know, uh, or, or even like mega stars. They have to have something to deconstruct. It's not just good enough for them to be you know, globally successful. We want to, we want to have something to, to, to play with and to push the plot. Well, one of the best episodes was one with Les Dennis, and he's exactly. not the biggest name. No, he's not a global name. No. He's, he's yeah. big in Britain, but um, uh, uh, there was something to deconstruct. And in many ways, it resonated more because people feel that they, they knew him, so they got everything. Um, but, um, you know, it's much more of an ensemble piece. And it, it always was, but it's it, it, even more so now. You know, it's about four people, um, Andy, Maggie, his agent, and, and Barry off EastEnders, uh, as um, he's known in, in the series. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it's much more them. It's much more those. But then we've still got big names. We've got Orlando Bloom in the first one. Well, wow, Orlando Bloom. Um, that's, pretty, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, he doesn't do a lot and, of stuff. I mean, and they're, 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 they're much more, you know, integral than they were, because we were worried that, you know, we might only have them for, you know, 10 minutes uh, in the series. But... Um, uh, and Keith Chegwin is amazing in the film. Honestly. People are laughing at yeah. the mere mention of his name there, and, Keith uh, And you'll eat your words. Does anyone ever turn you down? Because I read that Keith Harris turned you down. That's true. Keith Harris. Was it Keith Harris you after, or were you just using him to get to Orville? Um, well, I think two people we asked that were worried about something. Um, so Orlando Bloom said yes, Bowie said yes, Sam Jackson said yes. 
um, uh, all these these mega stars could smile. Like but um, Keith Harris said no. I was turned down by Keith Harris. That's quite fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. I like yeah. that. And what reason did he give? Uh, he he didn't like it. He didn't like it. Not a big enough part for him, or what? He didn't like. Uh, it? No, he just he just he, he wasn't comfortable with it. He didn't understand it, or? Well, I don't want to say that. Maybe he just didn't didn't like it. No, he didn't get it. <laughs> Uh, we have a clip. Let's all look at it. Now, I think the clip, uh, if you can introduce this to us, this is episode three, and I think it's very fitting we have Julie on the show this evening because this is Daniel Radcliffe, who we know as right. Harry Potter, Absolutely. on the show with you here. So we're making a Harry Potter-esque type, uh, type thing, and, and uh, I, I, I've sort of become a bit famous. Uh, so the character episode. Andy has had a success now. Absolutely. So okay. he's at the bottom of a different you know, yeah. ladder, really, and, he, and I've got a line in this, this thing, and, and Maggie's still an extra. OK, let's have a look. That's great. Uh, will there be a third series? You did two series and a special of, um, ex of The Office, of course. Do that again. Again. Do you that. did, yeah. You did two series and a special of The Office, all right? People With me not smiling at your buffoonery. <laughs> <laughs> will there Take be a three. <laughs> okay, and laughter dies. Okay, and in your own time, action. <laughs> I'm beginning to wish I had Nikki back out if she was easier to deal with. <laughs> Will there be a third series? <laughs> Don't do that. I can't I use that on its own. All the difficult bit, all the talking. Right, you're a chat show host. You get £20 million an episode. Just... <laughs> right. We all know you're worth it. OK, go again. Go again, like, no, this is happening. You Will there be... <laughs> Will there be a third series? <laughs> Why do you do this to me? Why do you come on and do this to me? Why do you just make my well, life easy? It's a bloody interesting question, anyway. It is an interesting question. <laughs> well, I do like extras was huge, right? The, the, the special, obviously, finished off the story neatly, but I wanted to see more. You mean The Office? Oh, OK. <laughs> Parkinson does it in one take. <laughs> Tell me the <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Uh, I'm not doing it. Uh, all right. Uh, well, now, you don't do the radio show anymore. You did a radio show. It was mainly here in London. You could get it on uh, DAT and, and Sky and stuff, but it was uh, for London Section XFM. You know that anymore. And you, DAT. you do. Was it called DAT? DAB. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> DAT was a song by Pluto Shervington. Got to number two. Um, <laughs> but you couldn't get it all over the country. Uh, no. But you do the podcast now. The podcast that you do is, is a big deal, isn't it? It's, it's, a... it's global. It's international. It's the beauty of the internet. We, uh, we do it in a little studio. We upload it ourselves. We, we stick it out there. And, um, and it's great because it can be heard anywhere. How many people download it, roughly? Uh, about eight million. Eight million? Uh, yeah, that, that have heard what, yeah, we, get, we get probably about half a million straight away every, every time we put one up. Um, and the rest by mistake. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you uh, and you charge for it now, so it's like a proper job. It's a proper thing. It's not just a. Well, we um we we, we had all these downloads, and um Carl had given up his job. Now, this is Carl Pilkington. Yes, the little shaved monkey buffoon. Um, uh, and uh, he won't mind me saying that because no. he won't fully understand it. Um, <laughs> it's got a perfectly round head, which well, we doesn't can see it there. Oh, he is very round, isn't it? Look at that little round head. It's nice. There's a shine on it as well. Oh, bless him. Um. And uh, he just left his work, and he was. We, we said about oh, we've had a, oh, we had a million, we've had two million, we've had four million. He was going, can't we charge a quid? <laughs> well, he's why that. So we did. Yeah. So you get so it's eight million quid per. Oh, d don't talk. D no. Oh, don't. you can make fun of my earnings. <laughs> <laughs> You're earning eight million quid for abusing no. a mentally retarded man. <laughs> Isn't he? Not officially. <laughs> Nothing to laugh at there. <laughs> yeah. um, and now you do a little bit of video that goes as well. You can download video footage uh, yeah. for the podcast it's as just, well. Just, just, it's just for fun, really. It's just, a, it's just a hobby. I just, I really, when I've discovered Carl, I feel like I'm Anthony Hopkins of the Elephant Man, taking down this, you know, taking around this sort of sideshow <laughs> freak. I, I want the world to, to see the oddity that is Carl Pilkington. He, and it, it, he, he's, he's. He is quite incredible. Um, he had kidney stones and he went into hospital and he said, I had to fill out this form, right, with things you can donate after your death. And it said, it went heart, liver, lungs. And he said, and I was ticking them. And said, the fourth was eyes. He said, no, I wouldn't tick them. And I went, <laughs> why wouldn't you tick your eyes to donate after you're dead? He went, I don't want to be a blind ghost. <laughs> 
doesn't, doesn't know he's doing it. That's brilliant, though, isn't it? He's great. All right, let's he's... have a look. This is, uh, this is you, Stephen Merchant, Carl Pilkington, and you're talking about Brokeback Mountain. And we sat him down, and it, we knew he'd never seen the film or heard about it, so we sat him down and we let him watch the bit in Brokeback Mountain. The bit. The bit. In the tent, mano a mano. Absolutely. Okay. This is the podcast. There's a point. There is a point there. Yeah. A point there. yeah. Um, now, uh, extras. Now... <laughs> extras is back on TV quite soon. Um, I know when you put the DVD out, you put a lot of extra stuff in, you put behind the scenes stuff, and uh, I know you bought some outtakes along to show us today. Will you explain? Well, there's a reason for that, yeah, because um, along with, we've got Alanda Bloom, David Bowie, Daniel Radcliffe, Chris Martin, we've got loads of uh, little surprise guests popping up all over the place. Uh, Jonathan is one of them. And, um, we, you know, we enjoy ourselves on the set, and um, uh, well, they're, they're outtakes, and but they're usually they're not as hate fueled huh? and 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 bile injected. Is it? Uh, have you got have you got any outtakes we, of other people? We have oh. Ian McKellen. Okay, right. Okay, it's, no, it's, no, it's lovely. It's nice. So, to see, isn't it? so, so, I like that. so that's you know yeah that's, yeah that's nice. That's a, a night of the round well, corpse and very sweet. So this is Jonathan. All Jonathan had to do, I said, well, the, 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 I don't want to give too much away, but as I say, I, I, Andy sort of makes a sitcom, and I get to meet. Jonathan Ross. Yeah. Um, and I said to Jonathan, I said, OK, so just do a bit. We're chatting. We're just getting to know each other. Yeah, I was ad-libbing. So, yeah, he's ad-libbing. So, one, there's no concession of me being anyone but me. So he's just talking to me now. I was acting. And think, look, just watch the filth and nastiness that comes out of his fucking gob. <laughs> Most of them are dead now. We're getting to that age. Fuck off. What are you Most talking about? Well, how old are you now? 45. Well, there you go. You're well past middle age. If you live to 70, middle age starts at 35, right? You're 10 years past middle age. I've been a household name for 20 years already. Same age. 20 years. <laughs> 20 years, haven't changed. <laughs> 20 years at the fucking top. Still the same bloke. Just more toys. Yeah. More, more of everything. Look, yeah. Only a little bit more there. <clears throat> it's muscle. So yeah, I've tried, I've tried them all, but the Atkins diet is all right. Okay, but you lose a lot of weight very quickly. But then who wants to eat meat and just cheese all the time? Dale Winton went off about a year and a half. And I'll be honest with you, he stank. Let's do so we can use. <laughs> you could use that. <laughs> that was great. Really? It was fantastic. Well done. Oh, cheers. I'm going to have a wank over Jade Goody's tits. You want to come downstairs? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. What was wrong with what I said there? Why, why do you have a problem with what I said there? It's a wonder we got it done. It's banter. That was just light-hearted banter. It was very, you were very good, actually, eventually. I thought I was a very good actor. Would you, would you write a sitcom for me? Would you write a bigger part for me in a sitcom? Um, yeah, I would. Really? Yeah. I didn't expect yeah. you to say that. <laughs> no. <laughs> if things don't work out the way I hope they... <laughs> if things go terribly wrong over the next ten years. <laughs> There's a scene uh, we were called upon to do, which I had trepidation when we approached it, which is where we, uh, we're meant to be falling around together and we're meant to be very close friends, me and Andy. And um, uh, we, we go topless, don't we? Yeah. Now, neither yeah. of us are in the prime. <laughs> oh. Really. Oh. It's not a sight you would wish to, to inflict on people who, you know, hadn't already been warned. Um, and then you, and you were kind of directing at the same time. I know Stephen Merchant this, but you're kind of directing while you're doing stuff, aren't you? Mm. So we're walking back and he says, uh, you know, and I think it's probably been waiting because he said, take your top off. So I took my top off and you take your top off. And he said, let's wrestle. Mm. Right. And we started wrestling. It was like women in love. Yeah. <laughs> Which That's is a very <laughs> disappointing film to get out. <laughs> um, not what you think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what I found, uh, and looking back, I feel a bit sad about and a bit, you know, embarrassed about, is that when you were saying wrestle, even though we were meant to be acting, I we still... We tried our best, didn't I we? I tried to beat I know, you in the I know, I know. We were like two schoolboys. Yeah, it was embarrassing. It's like a warm-up with tennis. We are trying to beat each other. It was embarrassing, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Did you... Can I ask you this honest and frankly? You're going to say, did I get an erection? No. <laughs> Shit, weren't you? <laughs> Did you get an erection? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ricky Gervais. <laughs>